hinder you, hinder you. Don't you let where you've been hinder you. Don't let what they've said hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let your past hinder you. You're a woman without limits. Yes, you are. Yes, You're you are. Good evening, viewers. You're welcome to Woman Without Limits. My name is Reverend Kathy Kiuna, and it's always a delight to have you tuned in. I tell you, Woman Without Limits is an amazing program. We bring many, many women and men also to come and tell us where they're coming from and what it is that they can advise us. What has God done in their lives? How are they transformed? Because see, many times when you are going through some particular predicament, it's so painful, sometimes you don't even see. Sometimes you don't even see the way forward. Or you don't even imagine that you can ever make it in life. And that's what Woman Without Limit is all about. To let you know, nothing can stop you, nobody can stop you, only you can stop yourself. Nobody can say negative things until you're stopped. But if you allow them, and if you allow yourself to stop, then you're gonna get stopped. And so you must understand that you are a woman without limits and today we have an amazing story Yay! that's what i'm talking about <laughs> of this wonderful woman her name is esther esther is the md of samchi telecoms she is a woman she is a mother she loves the lord and she's come a mighty long way she has done great and mighty things yet she came from a serious serious background and so today we want to hear her story and see how it can affect your life to know that you're totally unlimited. Amen. Amen. Would you welcome with me Esther on set? <laughs> Hi Esther. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank yeah? you. Oh, very, very nice to see you. Pressure for yes. Us, sir. yes, very good that you're in Woman Without Limits today. Absolutely yes. awesome. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Beautiful, and you look the part. <laughs> you, you know? know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. So, Esther, you know, Samchi Telecoms, before we even get to Samchi, I want you to tell us who Esther is. Can you please introduce yourself? Um, I am Esther Mushemi. A woman who loves God with all I am, with what I have. I am a mother. I have two children. And in the marketplace, I am an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> okay, and we're going to get to that entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Would you please tell us like, wh where you, wh how you grew up? Did you, did you grow up as an entrepreneur? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> there is a serious learning curve. Mm. I was born in the village down in Nyeri many years ago, not the other day, but I'm proud of my position as it now. Mm -hmm. And um, as a child, I was one of those children who were truly like, um, how do I put it? Obedient from day one. Wow. Why? Because I early realized that my dad used to adore people who are successful. And my father was a very strict, strict, strict teacher. So it's either you go to school and learn very well, or you'll be going to the coffee and picking the tea, which I. 
you hated. And that one. <laughs> <laughs> we were not very good friends. So I realized to be in good books, yeah. I have to read very, very you hard. You have to work hard. I have to work very hard. Mm. And right from day one, even as a student, it was instilled in me that I can never be successful unless I work hard. And so at an early age, I, w I was taught to work hard and that has made a significant difference up to today because I'm one of those people who believe if you don't work hard, then you don't eat. It's as simple <laughs> as that. And you know, it's not just you, Absolutely. Esther. Do you know that's the word? That's actually God. It is God. Yeah. It's in the word. It says if you don't it's, work, you, yeah, don't, you eat. don't eat. So this culture, this new way of doing things where people think that you can eat and you do, when you are not working, where you think you can get things so easily is absolutely not acceptable from a human day-to-day -day perspective, mm. but more importantly, from a godly perspective. God does not honor people who do not work hard. Come on. Absolutely. So it was instilled in you. You started working it, very it, hard from a tender yeah, age. I can tell you, Pastor, I've ever been an A student. So... <laughs> wow. So okay. that worked out for me. Right. And therefore, uh, I, I then went to secondary school. Um, I schooled in Kahuya Girls. Okay. And uh, in secondary school, I gave my life to Christ when I was in Form 1. Wow. That defines me at another level. And I always tell people, at that age, I learned how to trust God in a stupid way. I usually call it almost a stupid faith. Yeah. And sometimes I joke and tell people, when my watch was not working, I could go and cross myself in the valley and tell God, God, my watch is not working. Because that was my problem then. But do you know what? God honored those sort of prayers. Wow. Because it was your all. You know, oh, the childlike the faith. Child like faith. Right. You present your problem before God wow. just as it is. Okay, over time, we learn to complicate these things and perhaps that's why we don't get answers to because we learn not to be specific. One of the other things I learned along the way as I grew up in my Christian life is mm, general prayers, let me go back to my basic. When I could talk to God in a simple way and he would answer, yeah. I want to have that relationship where I can communicate to God that way. Without I, complicating. Without complication. God is not complicated. He is as simple as that. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Can so, you imagine? Daddy, my, phone, my my watch is not working. Yeah. Daddy, I need honesty. a phone. Yeah. Daddy, I need a husband. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Wow. Absolutely. And he would do it. Sad. Right. And, uh, so praying in the valleys, praying in the mountains, is how I grew up knowing how to manage my life best. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, after that, yes, I went to, I did my O-levels. I passed very well. I then went to Mukumu Girls, Koko Western. So I know a lot of Western. So when people talk about, uh, this thing is called what? Tribal, where you came from and all right. that. You know, we grew up with- Together, a, together integrated. Integrated. Yeah. Right. We never knew about these things that people are telling us today. Yeah. We all knew we are students. We will sit the same exams. When we pass, we'll go to the university. That's mm. it. Yeah, my best friend in primary was also oh. called Mairo. Oh, That's how I learned yeah. to talk Luya. <laughs> Uborandi. <laughs> And that's, those are the lessons that we right, learned right. when we were growing up, how to live with people, mm. how we change when we grow up. I Only mean, God knows. Only God knows. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, we need to go back to those simple and basic principles where we took and related with each other as people, period. No, 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 <laughs> no language no and language. tribe and where you Absolutely. come from and uh, no clan, nothing. No it was just friendship. Friendship. And I usually say, between me and you, we were created with the same, we have the same blood. By right, the way. right. What makes me live is what makes you live. Right. And if God is out of, out of that, if he doesn't give you that, like, imagine you're not there. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So let's recognize that we were all created in the same image, and that was God's image. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
money. Uh -huh. I then went to the university, University of Nairobi, and did a BCom accounting. Today people ask me, and I even ask myself, why did you do BCom accounting? Uh. I honestly, I'm not so sure why I did BCom accounting, because being an entrepreneur the way I am, you know, accountants are said they are these quiet people. Yes, I'm an introvert. They just think money. They just think <laughs> money, ETC, ETC, yeah. double entry, debit and credit and all that. But you know what? That's, that's what we knew then. The career guidance we were given was zero. So when you pass well, you are taken to where you think pe good people should be. Eh? Yeah. If I was doing it today, mm. you would not definitely do that. I am wondering what I would do today. <laughs> yeah, right. But also a learning lessons for me, mm. from as I am bringing up my children. And the, last, the other day, I was just thinking and talking, sharing with certain, uh, certain, uh, certain mothers. And I reflected and I said, you know what? Imagine me, pastor, I've never sat down with my children and told them, be an engineer, be a doctor, be a whatever. But I didn't know why I didn't do that. Many parents want to go that direction. But this is what I, I have and taught my children. You go to school, you give me the best. Mm. The, rest the rest is up to them. The rest will happen, but you yeah. have to do the best. Eh? Yeah. So if you're in Saturday 8, pass to go to secondary. When you're in secondary, pass to go to the university. university. And when you are there, take what you think is best for you. Wow. Why is that important? Because when a child or when a person identifies what they truly, truly are good at, without the influence of anybody, including the parents in due respect, right. then you give them the chance to, to make it. To make it and become the very best that mm. they should be. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Esther, it's yeah. so good that you're saying that because yeah. like for us yeah. in our time, mm -hmm. our parents, uh -huh. the minute we, ladies, you finish, you became a secretary automatically. Uh -huh. True. But there was even no talk. Yeah. It was secretary. Yeah. The men, accountancy. Uh, no. the, my mm -hmm. husband and the likes. Mm -hmm. Accounts, mm -hmm. that's all they knew. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's very sad because yeah. me, secretarial, I was doing it like this. Mm -hmm. This is for my mother, mm -hmm. not for me. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the day, it yeah. denies you the opportunity of actually living the real purpose that you are created for. Yeah. And there are people even today who are struggling doing what they should not be doing, yeah? And you know, when you are struggling doing what you should not be doing, imagine. You can't excel. You can't. No. In fact, I usually say it's a lost destiny. I mm. don't know how to do that. Mm. Is. Um, and so let's liberate ourselves. Amen. To actually. <laughs> <laughs> and liberate, liberate our children. And liberate our children <laughs> to actually do what we must do. Right. Because then, uh, we have very many successful people at the end of the day. Wow, that's yes. awesome. That's yes. beautiful. Yes. So now, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I did my BCom. Right. And uh, after that, uh, then it was three years. So we successfully finished that. And then I joined. Oh, those days, we used to get jobs when we were still in the university. Yeah, As long as you did well, there was not a marking. Wow. So, ah. Uh, so yes, we were admitted in, um, I joined one of the audit firms, the top four or five audit firms. The auditor now I became, and the auditor which I was for 16 years. Um, <laughs> I joined it as a salary of 4,000 shillings. And I always speak about that 4,000 shillings, even when I meet my staff today. And what I'm telling you is what I would tell my staff or even my daughter and my, child and my son. Because, yes, it didn't look much. It Four. didn't seem much. Right. But there's one thing I did that I always accepted the, my salary with a grateful heart. Wow. A great heart. Wow. Not only to man. Wow. Wow. But I was ever. Wow. So that, that, that right there, yes. that will preach the gospel you know. with a grateful heart. Yes. How many people do accept their salaries with a grateful heart? Because a lot of people, when it's especially little, mm -hmm. they put it on their bosses, mm -hmm. they blame the bosses for mm -hmm. where they are in life, mm -hmm. they feel bad. Mm -hmm. And you see, you can never be elevated mm -hmm. when you have a. a, a uh, 
not a thankful heart. Mm -hmm. You need to have a thankful heart all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is very important yeah. to have a thankful heart and a grateful heart, whatever the position is. So, but one thing I promised myself, I will triple that salary the soonest possible. Mm -hmm. Not what I've said, I promised myself. Mm. Preach today. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because I realized it's about me and my God. It's not about anybody else. Right. And once you make that determination, once you resolve to do what you must do, to achieve what you must achieve, allow nobody else to stop you. Hey, come on. So, I buried myself into hard work during the day. I buried myself into hard work in the evenings. Why do I say in the evenings? Because I needed to do my CPA case if I wanted to be an accountant. So I was doing my evening classes in Strathmore. In my bag were books for Strathmore and a file which I work after Strathmore an audit file that is, because I need to finish my assignments and I need to finish the work I did not finish in office because in the morning I have to give my boss a complete file and there was no argument about deadlines. Hey, eh. Oh yes, there was no argument about deadlines. You would always meet them. Well, if you don't meet them, there are consequences. You know there are consequences. Yes, somebody's, somebody's oh, eyeing yes. your job. Oh yes, there are consequences. Yes. <laughs> and so I always say, and this is truthful. As long as I was a student trainee, I never slept before 1 a.m. Wow. And sure, it, it will not have happened because you are working, you are going to school, you are cooking, you are doing everything that you need, and tomorrow you are in a job again. Right. And tell you what, I told you I had 4,000. Yes. In six months, I passed my exams and I tripled that salary in six months. Hey. <laughs> And, and woman without? Yes. yes. Come and on, I didn't hear you. Woman <laughs> without limits. That's what's up. Amen. Uh -huh. And then after that, of course, uh, let me say something else that also has helped me along the way because I also want you to carry you along on that. Um, at an early age, in my education, in my career life, there is one thing that I also ho I don't respect and value a lot. And if you come to my office, this is one of the values you find written in my boardroom and in my office. One of the values. And that is honesty and integrity. Wow. Because if you are honest, if you carry yourself with integrity, hmm. sometimes it looks like you are not there. You're missing it. Oh, yes. You look like you're missing it. Yeah. You look like promotions are coming and, and going. going. Passing you there. You look like opportunities are coming. And many times, by the way, Pastor, there are times I've lost opportunity. There's this guy, guy who come in my office and tell me, um, I want you to do this connection so that we can uh, and use this whatever, and then we are going to pay this commission to so and so. Mm. And especially when it's a government office. I'll tell them, I'll not pay them twice, as a citizen and as an individual. Come so on! I'm out. Oh. And, and two, there are times I have lost based on that. Yeah. But I do not consider it a loss because... It's actually a gain. Oh my God, yeah. it is a gain. Right. As a Christian, mm. you can never lose. Yeah. Oh yes. And I think it's about time yeah. that even Christians wake up and say and declare, we cannot lose. Yeah. Even when we look, we are like we are losing. We, can't. we are gaining. Yes, because God is on our side. He's he fighting. is on our side. Right. And all things at the end of mm. the day mm. work for good to them that love him, to them that are called according to his purpose. And you see so that sometimes will come. Yeah. Sorry, that, that sometimes will come as a test. 
Oh, yes. To see if you'll take that uh -huh. direction or you will wait on God. Yes. Mm. Yesterday, interesting that you have said that, Pastor. Mm. Yesterday I had a conversation. There is this business, business thing that uh, was very tempting for me, honestly to us. And there's a time that I had said <laughs> not to it. And this time it comes and I'm saying, oh my God, there's so much <laughs> money here. <laughs> and I couldn't, truly it was looking like it's doable. And I was trying to, it's nothing so bad. And I was trying to justify it. But from a moral position, I won't give the details for the respect of what the other person as well. And it's not bracken, it's not clear that it is wrong. But I know I've struggled with my conscience, allowed it over time. And, and I woke up and I said, I've told my children severally that I will not do this. It's one of the businesses that I've are flourishing in the marketplace today and yes and I called my pastor and I told my pastor you know I'm feeling so conflicted on this I know my confessions have been this but what and at the end of the day I feel I should not do it and then of course the confirmation was that I, I should not do it mm. and I just took up uh, my phone I sent a message and I said I'm sorry I'm out of it. And this is one of the things that came out because of what you have said. I was reminded of when Christ was tempted by the devil mm -hmm. after 40 days of fasting. Right. Right. Remember Christ had finished the fasting. Right. He had gone through the 40 days. Yes. And he was just at the verge of starting his ministry. But at that point when he was hungry, Temptation. When it was so bad, it comes when you're broke. See you <laughs> on the top of the mountain. Yeah. And how many? And I say, devil, mm. you're not going to take me on the top of the mountain. Yeah. Things may not be working. <laughs> they may not look like they are working. They may look like I need something. And yeah. I say, yeah, this is you taking me on the mountain. Right. Showing me this is what you owe. Yeah. Uh -uh. I am not bowing to you, no matter how much the money is. Yeah. I know my God you do it wow and you take me to the next level and i say that because yes the devil loves taking us on the mountain showing mm. you all this look young beautiful girls like this if only if only tell him no you cannot take me on the mountain and show all these beautiful handsome men because furthermore they are not yours they belong to god right <laughs> So, so yes. then you got married, you know. Oh, yes. Grew up. <laughs> <laughs> After all I the schooling and the education. Yes, yes, I got married. Right. Uh, that today is usually one when people ask me, are you married? And I'm saying, mm, okay, how, yeah. does, how do I answer this one now? Yeah. <laughs> because, yes, I was married uh, for 22 years. Uh, wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was married to a gentleman, a man I loved so much, a man that still, <laughs> I still honor him up to today in my mm. head because I know he was a gentleman. Mm. He was called the rich General Mushemi. So we were married for, 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 ten year, for 22 years, so they are, yes, I think. Yeah. I've been, <laughs> now do you say I've been unmarried or what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> I've been alone mm. for the last 10 years. Actually, uh, 13th March was my t our 10th anniversary. Mm. And, uh, and yes, yes, I was married. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <And> okay. <laughs> yes. You know, you're, you're referring to it as was. Yes. So uh, you, you, maybe you can let us know. So after 22 years, he yes. After 22 years, <laughs> I have been alone, yeah. and I'm still alone, mm. and uh, I then won. Let me say, um, that was uh, when I lost my husband, that was one of the darkest moments in my life. Right. Um, I won't hide that. That, uh, that was one of the moments that I felt, oh my God, the world, is the world has come to an end. Mm. 
and more so because yes he was going through sickness we were in uk he passed on when we are in uk and it is like you have a husband in the morning and in the evening you have no husband and you are in a strange country and it was so cold and you are alone Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember being, uh, being, 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 uh, being um, a military officer and a high-ranking military officer. I knew, of course, the death would be announced by the president in the hours. And I knew then I needed to break this to my family. And I'm out there and I'm not with my children. Well, your children were here in Kenya? My in children Kenya. were here, right. were in Kenya. And... Uh, Emotions are going through you at that point. You don't know what is right, what is wrong. You don't know who to talk to. You don't know whatever. Again, guys, learn to respect your pastors. <laughs> preach, <laughs> preach today. <laughs> learn to respect your pastors right. and to honor them because even at that moment, and I worship at Jewish Baptist Church. My pastor is Pastor Wanje. And Amazing I man. And Were you there when oh, I came to yes, preach? Yes, of course, Pastor. <laughs> Did I preach well? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, the only person my spirit could reach out to was my pastor. Mm. And I told him, Pastor, of course, he was walking with me in the journey. So I called my pastor and I told him, Pastor, this is what has happened. And I am requesting you to go to my home. He knows my home, obviously. And tell, break this to my, to my children because I want them to know that before I talk to them. And I want them to know before it becomes public news. Yeah. And um, of course, that was, that's what happened. And I guess by 1 a.m. 1 a.m. it was public news. And... Um, that then was uh, uh, um, like a new life. You are beginning, like you are starting from scratch. Scratch again. Yeah. Remember, when you are married, there is, first of all, you get significantly. Mm. And now, now that I'm not there, sometimes I wonder why you allow yourself to scratch that much. But mm. that is true. <laughs> your identity is allowed your husband significantly. And, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because when you get married, you become two. The two become one. Mm. So, so it is good that you become that. But um, uh, after that now, trying to manage that alone, yeah. starting from square one, was really tough. And also, which is one of the, the burdens that I'm having at the moment about the widows, not because of myself personally because I think God has helped me to move on and I know God has been faithful. If I would say that God has not blessed me, mm. I would be telling a lie mm. because I know he has proved himself in my life, Amen. in my business, in my children, in my home. After that, I set myself on a path of discovering whom I am. Mm. Okay. Without this person who was so important to me. And for two years, Pastor, and I know people deal with things differently. Right. My formula may not be your formula, but for two years, I decided I do not even want friends around me. I do not want even family seriously allowed me outside my children. Why? Because I wanted to define whom I am. Hey. And I do tell people mm. today, mm. and I don't know whether I would have said this if my husband was alive, I wanted to define who Esther Wajiro Delito was before I was Esther Wajiro Moshemi. Mm. Because that identity of when I was married it's no longer there. Right. And you know when you are married, this identity is so strong and at times it's almost like 
overshadows you. Also, it overshadows like you. Like you're nowhere. Yeah, like you're nowhere. Yeah. And that is why even women, when they lose their husband, they find it so difficult to come out of it. Mm. Because unless now you purpose to discover who, the society doesn't help you to come out of it. You are in those, you are brothers, you are sister, you are the society. And I dare say sometimes, even the church doesn't help you to come out of it. Because, and it's not by default, it's because people don't know. They don't know what people to do. People don't know what right. to do. People don't understand. And they can't understand. And unless perhaps we try to help them understand faster. So for two years, I wanted to know who I, am, who I am. I wanted to be able to relate with people as Esther myself. I wanted pastor to be able to come and have this conversation, not with a cloud over me. And I don't want you to look at me like I have lost. Like pitifully. I, that's a word. Right. I want you to, I want me, myself to be prepared to meet you and to discuss, to meet my business colleagues and relate like Esther. Mm -hmm. And again, that helped me a lot. So, so fast forward, yes. two years are over, yeah, now <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yes. you have discovered yourself. Yes. Tell us, how did you now get into the CEO, into becoming a CEO in your own right, in your own company? How did you form that? I think that, that is part of the journey. Right. When you are discovering yourself, that is part of the journey. Right. You then realize it's you and you and you. So, some you telecom which is the, yes, I come from, my company is called Samchi. We now call ourselves Samchi Group of Companies, so right. I'm the CEO of the Samchi Group of Companies. Right. Uh, Samchi sounds Indian. Oh, I love that, because people say it sounds Asia. How oh, are they tell you? Remember my children <laughs> are called who? Sami and Shiro. So that's... <laughs> hey. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. All so right. That's where the that's name clever. Come from. Yeah. yeah. So the name is a combination of Sam and Shiro. Sam is a firstborn, Shiro is a secondborn. And uh, so it was, yes, we had done it right. many years ago. I guess there is a place that I jumped. After I was an auditor, mm. <laughs> that's why you are lost. Yes. After I became <laughs> an auditor for many years, I then branched out into this peop thing that people like a lot yeah. called being your own boss. Mm. Everybody who is employed <laughs> wants to be their own boss be their at some own point. bosses at some point. Mm. But this is what I always say. Yes, it is a good desire to be your own boss. But let me tell you, it is not sometimes as lousy as it looks. Not even sometimes. It's <laughs> actually not rosy. <laughs> <laughs> Being your own boss is too, boss is too demanding. It's too demanding. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be prepared for that. However, there are also other bosses that become your bosses. Right. You get what I mean? Your custom become your boss. The taxman become your boss. Your bank becomes your boss. Yeah. Because... Mm. You are in a relationship with them, yeah. which at times you are not commanding that relationship. They are pulling the string. So it's not absolutely true that you quit your job because you, if that is your real motive, why you want to quit your job, I tell you. Stay in the job. <laughs> <laughs> I stay in the job. Yeah. I also do believe this. I also believe this. Not everybody can be self-employed. Can't be self-employed. Right. Not everybody can be self-employed. Right. So there is a place for those who should be self-employed, who should be entrepreneurs. Mm. But honestly, guys, there is also a place for people who excel. Mm. In employment. In employment. Right. This is what I advise and tell people. Excel. Choose to do the very, very best in whatever mm. you are doing. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know? Amen. So, so Esther, yes. now you're doing very well <laughs> with hotel, what? Can you now tell us about that even as we close up? Can yes. you tell us now wh where Esther is? Because you, you rose up and picked yourself, picked every piece in spite of the pain and became a woman to reckon with in this society. Um... Yes, Pastor, that's a testimony that people 
make about me. Yes. And therefore, with a lot of humility, I've come to accept that, yes, I'm perceived as a, a woman who has significantly made the term. Achieved a lot. Achieved, uh, yes, we, I have. However, money does not define whom I am. Mm. 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 Yet, without fear of contradiction, yeah. I work so hard because money is important. Mm. The Bible says, money answereth all things. Right. However, the same Bible tells me that the love of money is the beginning of all evil. Mm. So for me, there is a balancing of of what the law of money is in your life. And if your money is not changing lives, I do not consider that as money you should have. Hey, in the first place. hey. Do you know, Esther, that's what it's all about? Yes. If it's not affecting a life, yeah. changing a life somewhere, yeah. yes. it's not good money. It's not. For what? Yeah, for what? Yeah, for what? You can only for eat what? one plate? Yes. You cannot, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Yes. So you must affect other people you must with your money. impact on other people. Right. I always say um, money is one of the byproducts of success. Mm. There are other very many ways of measuring whether I'm successful or not. For me, the greatest measure of success is the impact I have on the people um, God has allowed me to reach to. Whether it's my children, I want to have an impact on my children. Whether it's my extended family, I want to have an impact on my extended family. Whether it's the people that I have employed, and by the way, I have over 600 employees. Whether it is the people that <laughs> I employ. I saw somebody, I saw somebody go, yes. <laughs> I want you to better have, believe. Absolutely. I want to have an impact on them. Whether it's a society, and that's one reason, Pastor, I am here, because I have come to accept that I need to share whatever little I have that can impact somebody's, somebody's life. On some, somebody's life. Right. And, um, and um, that's important to me right and at the end of the day because all of us mm. we one day leave this earth this world i always tell myself i never want to be ashamed when i start before god and he asks me what did you do with the talent i gave you i gave you right and that's important to me yes that's deep. Mm. Mm. When you finally stand before your maker, mm. will he say, I gave you this talent. You multiplied it many times because the Bible tells us, Pastor, go ye, dominate, mm -hmm. make profits, yeah. depending on the fashion you are leading, yeah. until I come back. Yes. Make profit. Guys, mm. it's a biblical truth. Yes. God is a businessman. Oh, yes. What absolutely. I'm telling you, he's a businessman. Absolutely. What I gave you, what have you yes. multiplied it with? But know? it is how, the how you mm. do it. Mm. That is very important at the end of the day. Right. As a Christian, the way you do your business cannot be and should never be the way a worldly person does. Right. If you are measuring the same way, Yani, Mukristo akisimama hapa, mm. na mwingine siyo Mukristo, mm. and people are trying to wonder what the difference is, hey. please call yourself into a meeting. Yes. <laughs> because surely... Because yeah, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I also say, Pastor, we have to run the principles of the kingdom. Right. That bring success. 
And the reason we are struggling so hard is because we are using the principles of the world to increase. This king, they will bring our increase. And they, they don't. can't work. Yeah. It's like this, guys. Going into an enemy's camp yeah. and using the tactics and the strategies of an enemy. Yeah. Can they work? No. They will beat you badly. <laughs> they will eh? beat you so badly. <laughs> so, yes, those are some yeah. of the things that pastors have learned. Yes. That I need to work within the principles of God. Right. I, and there are so many, and there are so many, and there are so many. I wish I could be able to write my practical ones, not the theory ones, because I've learned over time. Wow. Over many, over the, the many challenges that I've gone through. Right. And I know I can depend on what God and his word says for me to be successful. Oh my, wow. Yes. Wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. So, so what yes, do we are a group of companies. We have three telecommunication companies. We have a, a Leo Estate. We have a hotel. We have a microfinance company. But we honor God and we are humbled before God because it's not about us. It's about what God has made us and allowed us to be. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so tell me about it. Tell me, uh, what would you advise a young person, you know, like uh, who is probably thinking they can never, ever make it in life? What would you advise them to do? <laughs> uh, first of all, let me say this, uh, Pastor. That's a devil's lie. Yes. <laughs> I always say this, as it's good that you have said, I always say this, God never created a failure. Mm. Mm. <laughs> failure is a creation of man, and that's the other thing I have talked about. Eh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. God never created a failure. Yeah. When he created you, he had his, your destiny yes. in his hand. Right. The Bible says, he has good plans for me. Mm -hmm. Plans to prosper me. Yes. So when did that change? Yeah. <laughs> it never changed. He's still yeah. the same God yesterday, today, yes, and forever. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So never allow that voice in you or that voice from outside, mm. or that voice from where you are born, to convince you and to accept mm. that you, can, you will be a failure. I'm here to tell you, you are not created a failure. Amen. Only take time to discover what purpose God created you for. Amen. And when you discover what purpose God created you for, pursue it to the very end. Amen. Don't give up along the way. When you look like it is not happening, remember, especially as a Christian, even when the world thinks you are not making it, remember from God's perspective, you are still his work in progress. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. That's, 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 that's very beautiful. Now coming to you, what do you do to unwind? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> However, th that question, in, let me put it this way. First of all, let's accept it's very important mm. that you find time to unwind mm. and to reduce the stress levels in your life. Because <laughs> one of the things that is messing people today is stress. Is stress. Many sicknesses and diseases Absolutely. are coming from stress. Are coming from mm. stress mm. and all that. Mm. So even Christians, we must learn to unwind. Mm. We must learn to reach out to what this is a stress. Right. But in a godly way, yeah? Yes. Yes, that's important. Yeah. yeah. So every morning. My waking up is that I wake up, I'll take a cup of water, I will pray, I will meditate, I will read my Bible, and every morning 
I must do yoga. So hey. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do yoga. Mm. Uh, I walk twice in a week. Once in a while, I'll do my gym in PowerPoint. However, the most important thing for me is that I am able to be on my own and be very, very comfortable. That's one of the other gifting that I've realized that God has put in, in my life, mm. and especially in my single life. Mm. I will come out of office, I will sit in my home, I will enjoy my cup of tea, I will enjoy my dinner and it will be served well, and I will sleep, and the next morning I am fine. So I love my space, I spend my time alone, and more importantly, I love it. If you don't love it, you can't enjoy it, by the way, guys. <laughs> don't, yeah, you have to love your, you have to love your I, me time. Yes, yeah. yes, your me time. Right. I love, and honestly, I love my me time. Wow. And somehow, when I leave office, me, I never carry work home. Never. Worse to my room. And if I do, and I'm thinking about an issue or a person at night, mm. when I'm supposed to be asleep, <laughs> something will give way the next day. Yes. And it will not be me, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but it is saying, this thing, imekusubua sana, yeah. something needs to change. Yes. And it doesn't matter what it is, something needs to change. Yes, right. <laughs> I am not going to have sleepless night over an issue, over a person. Mm. No way. Mm. The day I have sleepless night, ha -ha, a decision needs to be made. Something needs to change. Right. Something needs to change. Because you need to sleep well. Yeah, I need to sleep well. Yes. And of course, <laughs> yes, you need to sleep well. Something yeah. needs to change. Of course, again, you are so advantaged as Christians. Mm. Take it to God in right. prayer. Right, take it, take it. Wow, I thank God. That was so amazing, really, really, really so amazing. And uh, we thank God for all your insight and your foresight. Yeah? Yes. yes, thank you so, so much. This is beautiful. And I know that somebody's life has totally been changed and transformed. Now we know the power of hard work for us to get where it is that God wants us to go. We have to have to work hard and we have to trust in him and our focus should be on God. Amen. Thank you so, so much. You're watching Woman Without Limits. <laughs> and may the good Lord bless you and do you well. I know that you have received impact even from this program. And I know Esther has touched your life. You don't have to wallow in self-pity. You don't have to die in that quagmire, in that pain. Actually, the pain that you're going through right now can catapult you to where God wants you to be. This is Woman Without Limits. Have yourself the most amazing week. Beautiful.